are glad to be here with you today. Could you tell us your name and your date of birth? My name is John Delmar Rawls, Jr. Okay. I was born January 8th, 1935. Okay. And did you grow up here in Morsel area? I was born in Morsel. Yep. I stayed here through, through high school. Uh, could you tell me what high school did you attend? In? Uh, Dunbar. Dunbar. Okay. Were there are significant memories of Dunbar that you'd like to share with us? Yeah. Uh, my first year of school was the first year of Dunbar's opening. Yeah. And what year was that? Um, I gotta think about that for okay. a while, but uh, it was in the 40s. It was 41 or 42, mm -hmm. I forget. And the principal and the, the, the staff there, were they all, can tell us about something about the staff? Well, yeah, the, uh, the principal was uh, Mr. Woods, uh, Margaret, Margaret Caldwell was a first grade teacher, uh, Dotsy Miller was a second and third grade teacher, Claire Neely was a fourth grade teacher. Uh, and there were some others, Mr. Banner and Penix and Woods, uh, Professor Woods taught a couple classes too. And uh, there were some other names, I can't remember all of them. But, yeah. Did you, um, what type of activities did you all do at the school? Well, there wasn't really that much to do, okay, uh, except recess. And, uh, but we did play uh, basketball, uh, and I was on a basketball team for three years. As a matter of fact, I was the tallest kid in the team. I played center. Uh, I don't know if you could call it successful, but we won a few games. <laughs> and we beat some schools nobody thought we could beat. Where were those schools? Uh, out of the Iredale County area? or? Well, we beat, we beat uh, Black High School in, in, in Huntersville. We beat School here in Statesville. I can't I'm trying to think. Unity. 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 Yeah. Uh, Landis. Uh, a few other teams. I, yeah. Taylorsville. Uh, there was a school in Catawba. And there were a few others. Growing up in which area of Morrisville, your neighborhood? I lived in, on the, we call the Junction. Okay. It was called a junction because the railroad tracks ran through it. And uh, there was uh, one main track leading into where it split off in front of Watkins Chapel's church there. One went to Statesville, one went, uh, I think it was Winston-Salem. And there was a big water tank there where the train stopped to, to uh, fill up with water because back in those days there were uh, steam, trains, steam trains and they, they needed a lot of water so and that's where they filled up their tanks and as kids we used to climb that tank and swim in it okay, until we got caught and my father whipped my rear end so put it into that but we did a lot of silly things like that. Who were your parents? John Delmar Rawls Sr., my daddy, and Sarah Mills uh, Walker Rawls. Uh, she was raised right there on Statesville Avenue, a pretty good sized family. My grandfather and my grandmother and all of her sisters and brothers were raised right there on that street. Now, School Street is near the junction. Uh, was there you didn't tell us anything? Did you hang out on School Street? School Street. School Street wasn't much of a street in those days. Okay. The, uh, let's see. It was one, two, three, and a barn, four, five houses in that area. Okay. That's back then. They built a few more since then, but yeah, there wasn't much there. The um. Except the, in a cemetery, a black cemetery. There were two black cemeteries in town. The one in the back of the school and the one, current one 
that still exists. And they're, they're only like maybe three, four hundred yards apart. There was a creek that ran through, through uh, the location of both of the cemeteries. So the, the creek there, um, you know, is known now, say, Sam Burke with the clay and everything. Did you ever go down to the creek and dabble with the clay or anything there? No, not really. We didn't start messing with clay until Clara Neely, who taught the fourth grade. She had a habit of trying to teach us how to next step with, with, with clay. Uh, and some of the kids did really well. Okay, uh, I had five thumbs, so. So, uh, what type of activities did you do as growing up? Um, is there a love of sports? You said basketball. Is there anything else that you all church? Um, what type of? Yeah, yeah. You get, you went to church every Sunday. Okay, now. My, my life, I got up on Sunday morning, okay, listen to Wings Over Jordan on the radio uh, while your mother was fixing your breakfast and stuff, and you got ready, you, went to, you got dressed up, you went to church, you went to Sunday school, okay, and after Sunday school, you stayed until the 11 o'clock service, and after that, then you go home and have your Sunday dinner. About four o'clock, you were back in church. Okay, I forgot the Christian dinner, I think they call it, something like that. Okay, yeah. And about seven o'clock, you, you were in church uh, for the evening service. So you spent almost all day in church. Which church was that that you attended? Watkins Chapel, the Amy Zion Church. What type of um, career did your parents have? My mother worked for the the family that ran the bank. There was one bank in Louisville, it was the First National Bank. It was on Main Street, and right next to Turner's Hardware Store. The building's still there. And that was the only bank in town at the time. Uh, can, I, can I ask you a question real quick? Yeah. All right, so you was talking about Dunbar, <clears throat> and you played sports. Tell me about a game, like one of the games you played against one of the teams. Do you remember, like, when you scored, what happened, some of the people you passed <laughs> it to? I'm 87 years old. <laughs> okay, I can't remember that. You know, uh, I wish I could, but no. Uh, I also played baseball. My father was, 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 was the uh, manager and, and coach of the team, junior team. Okay. And the... Ball field was right across the street from our house. And the field where the shirt factory is now. Uh, we used that field to play play our games, and there was uh, a team called the Southern uh, Bells, okay, off Bell Street, uh, off of Bell, Bell Street. Willie Fronter, so I remember him. He he managed that team, okay, and they had a good team. And a lot of the guys, older guys, were uh, some of them I didn't even know could play ball. They played pretty well. Okay, but we could beat them as kids. Okay, and uh, my daddy was organized it, and uh, a couple other guys, including uh, what's his name, who owned the taxi service, Terry Graham. Okay, Terry had had I think four or five taxis. And he would use his taxi to take us to up to, up to our game if we played out of town. Uh, the race relation in Mooresville, how, was, how did you feel that you were treated uptown or the things that you experienced uptown growing up in Mooresville? Well, you, you knew your place. Whistling the white girls, this was one shoe. Okay. And uh, as a matter of fact, I got into a fight with a white, white kid one day on the way home to school. He stopped in at Mooresville Drugstore to get a milkshake. And as I was getting ready to go in, this white girl was coming out and had his swinging doors. And uh, I stepped back and 
opened the door for her. She walked into my arm. And this white kid hit me. And I hit him back. <laughs> okay. As a matter of fact, I tried to knock his head off. And uh, the guy who, who owned the joke so knew me. So he came out and stopped it. Okay. And, you know, told the white kid to, to scoot off. And then he took me home. That's, that's the way it was. They so knew you from your mother being, working at the bank and stuff? Yeah. 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 And your father, did what type of work was he doing? Well, after he got out of, out of the Navy in 45, he went back to the job he had before. He worked at, at, at Goodman's Drug Store. You, are you familiar with Goodman's Drug Store? No, sir, I'm not. Okay. Where was you that were, located? Yeah. Uh, right across the street from the train station, on the corner. Right, let me let me stop momentum for a second. Are there any others that you can tell us about? Uh, not off the top of my head. As we're talking, I might think of somebody. Okay. okay. Uh, there were a lot of people in my memory I can see, but I can't think of their names. Okay. Uh, yeah, J uh, Bill Allison. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Something about Bill Allison. He, he opened, uh, actually after World War II, he built and opened a cafe on, on the East Night. Okay. I can't think of the name of that street that it's on right now. Is that Cabarrus? Is it Cabarrus? Yeah, Cabarrus. Okay, yeah. He built the building, he put in a, 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 a cafe, a barber shop, a beauty parlor, and that, that, that was about it, yeah. I just heard about that today. That's interesting. Uh, it got to be pretty rough in here. <laughs> <laughs> what, was it a whole lot of people or just the activities yeah, was a little rough? Yeah, people would get a little, you know, tanked up, get into little fights over women or whatever they want to get in a fight over. You know. and I remember uh, there were a couple of night fights up in that place. It was really wild. I have one, one, one something in my jockey memory. Uh, Purcell, uh, what's his name? Vandenberg. Vandenberg. You know, Purcell, Vandenberg. Uh, he was saying that there were a lot of restaurants that had black cooks. Oh, yeah, all but, of them did. Yeah, black cooks, yeah. but you, they wouldn't let the blacks come in and sit down. You had to get the food and go. That's true. Yeah. And, well, you can tell us something about what you know about that. And then, he also said back then they wasn't letting any blacks work in the walls of meals either. If they did, they was only cleaning or dumping trash and, and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I remember that, uh, especially the, uh, the Moorsville Mill, the one they called Moor Mill. Uh, my daddy worked at Cascade when he when he quit his job. At the drugstore, he went to work at Cascade, but he he went to work there as as a air conditioning worker, okay, to maintain air, air conditioning system. Uh, so, um, can you tell us some stories? Like when your dad came home from work, did he ever talk about some things to you? He would talk about what? When he came home from work, are there things that he used to talk to you about? No, not really. Uh, he only talked about staying out of trouble, okay. not getting f stupid fights, keeping your grades up, okay. and get prepared, prepared to go to college. That was him. Any re um, relationship with the police? How did you see the police treat? Did they come into the house where the knife fights were? Did, was the law enforcement involved in that? I, I can't talk about that because I wasn't there, okay? I was a kid. Uh, and I wasn't allowed to hang out in the cafes, okay, until I was like a junior in high school. And I'd hang with my buddies on the weekend, maybe on Saturday and Sunday. And other than that, I didn't go to those cafes. Who were some of your close buddies? Well, Oscar Reed, 
Sonny Caldwell, uh, Kenneth Boss, Charles Connor. Big heart, man. Calvin Jatana. Hmm. I gotta push the bank. It's been a long time. Did you have any female friends that you were? Now, now you're getting nosy. <laughs> <laughs> now we got it. We want to hear all the friends. Can't leave them out. I'm sure you'd have said Richard Mills and Speedy Mills. <laughs> no, no. I knew them. Okay. As a matter of fact, they lived. Uh, Speedy, that's the daddy Speedy and their mother, they lived in back of us on Ash Street. Yeah. Because our house was right there on the corner of, of Statesville Avenue and Ash Street. And they. And, at the end of our yard, uh, there was a house there that, that Maceal Pinkson and her, and her family lived in for a while. And there was another house, and then there was, uh, what do they call those things, where there's two apartments in them? Okay. That's where Speedy, Speedy Mills lived. Apartment, brownstones, apartment houses. Yeah, yeah something like that. But this it was a white, it was a yellow uh, wooden building. I, if I think about it, I can think of most of the people who lived on that street. Then the Pinkston family lived back there. They had a big uh, white house. I think a three bedroom house, yeah. So you, Geraldine, um, Pinkston, Geraldine was Caldwell. Mace, that was May Seal's daughter. May Seal's daughter, yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, May Seal came out of that family, and then she married James Caldwell, and they lived on Church Street until they. Got to the point they could find a house on Ash Street and then moved back to Ash Street. Yeah. I know a lot of people went north. Did you go north um, when you finished high school or mm -hmm. did you go yeah. to college? Can you yeah. tell us? Yeah, I went to Howard University. Okay. Okay, yeah. 1952. Went to Howard University. My, my aunt, my, my uh, mother's sister, Ruby, was. Uh, the head nurse at Freedman's Hospital in Washington. And there's another, there's another story there, but it's uh, that same family that owned the bank that my mother worked for, she worked for too, okay? And she was older than my mother, and she was very light, very, very light. She was almost white looking, okay? That family arranged for her to go to nursing school at Duke University. And when she graduated, she went to Washington, D.C., and she wound up being the head nurse at Freedman's Hospital. That's how I got to Howard. Uh, I didn't want to go to Howard. I wanted to go to A&T. <laughs> okay, but, yeah. Did you, do any, did you pledge when you were at Howard? Any fraternities? No, I didn't. I, I did pledge once, and I got into a fight with, with one of the brothers. And <laughs> okay, I said, we'll get to it. I don't need it. Yeah. What was your major? Psychology. So did you come out, and what did you do with that? Well, when I graduated, I went ROTC thing, I went to the service, okay, in the Army. And I spent some time in Europe. Uh, and when I got out, I came home and started hanging around my little ex-buddies, June Reed and all, all the other guys. My daddy was the kind of person he was. He'd say, uh, what, are you, what are your plans? And I said, well, I haven't put it together. He said, well, I suggest you do. And uh, so I went to talk to the Air Force and we arranged for me to go to Temple University to get my master's. And, uh, I spent uh, almost five years in the Air Force as an Air Force psychologist. Uh, I don't know who this is leading, but yeah. Okay, yeah. And you, you went to California from there, or you yeah, came back yeah, to Yeah, I went to California from there. Yeah, I uh, met, a, met a girl. And, uh, I was in Amarillo, Texas, which is the, I can't find the right word to describe Amarillo, Texas. <laughs> okay. But it's the worst place I've ever been in my life. Uh, but 
but uh, she was white, and I was black, and in Texas, that's that's a no-no. So anyhow, I'm, when I went to to, uh, to uh, San Jose in California, when I got out, she followed me, and uh, we got married. Thank God we didn't have any kids. <laughs> We wound up getting divorced. Uh, and she appealed to my parents to get me to come back to her, but I, did, I never did that. And I married my kid's uh, mother about a year after that. And we were together until I came here. And she passed away about a year and a half ago. How long were you all married? Me. Actually, 31 years. Yeah, um, I see you talk about golf. Can you tell us a little bit about your golf career? Well, I had never touched a golf club, okay? And I was living in, 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 in San Jose, and dude that uh, worked for me, I was running a school for it. For, Kids who needed help. Um, and one of the guys who worked with us was a golfer. And he got me to play golf a couple of times. I got interested in it. And the next thing I knew, I had joined the club and learned how to play pretty good golf. And the next thing I knew, I was beating pros. And one thing led to another. So. And I wound up being a member of a couple of country clubs. Yeah. I have one question. Uh, can you just kindly tell us what you know about Mosul? Uh, something that you know that we probably don't know what streets was dirt streets, um, what was some of the games other than baseball and basketball that you, all, you did as a child? I know that Mr. Vance had a big thing up there at his... Yeah, I, I, played, with, I played for Vance. Yeah, and, 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 uh, I played Plum Trotman and some of the other ones. Um, so. Yeah, I was, I was still, still in high school till from the 10th grade on. I played for my daddy's team, I played for Vance's team. And I played with a team uh, that was sponsored by Moors and Mills. The, okay. the, they called them the Demon Moors, Moors Demon Tigers. I yeah, so, I forgot the name. Yeah, that's what. Uh, Calvin Teton <laughs> played for him. Pete Sharp played for him. I played for him. Uh, I'm trying to think of some other names. Uh, Leon. Uh, What's Leon's name? Pfeiffer. Pfeiffer. Yeah, he played for him. Uh, there were a few others. And there were two or three dudes from, uh, from Cornelius that played for him, too. Yeah. But they worked at the mill. I know, uh, what's the name that we interviewed on West Ham now? The one that gave me your number. Uh, it's Helen. Miss Helen. And she said, Helen, was, yeah. yeah, she was talking about the baseball. When we got to the baseball team, she kind of got a smile on her face. She said, because there was one or two guys that she kind of liked on the, on the team, so yeah. she... <laughs> <laughs> but but, but uh, she was kind of telling us about some things about, you know, her work history and stuff of this nature. So when you got out of school, you never did. You went straight on to college. You didn't do any work. Uh, the first summer I, I was out of Howard, I worked at, for Bargain Brothers Construction Company that summer. Oh. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't know anything about construction work. And the first job they sent me to was up at the Cascade Mill where my daddy worked. <laughs> and we were uh, putting in some air conditioning stuff and had to tear down, you know, some walls and stuff. And this dude gave me a jackhammer. I had never touched a jackhammer in my life. I didn't know what to do with it. And that thing kicked my butt. <laughs> so, but I learned how to. 
just didn't use it for a while. And my daddy came out and looked at me and he shook his head. <laughs> Proud yeah. moment for him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you said that uh, Mo, uh, you was, when they're not sure if if Moore was if Dunbar was at Rosenwald School, you probably wouldn't know that. Uh, no, it wasn't. It was built brand new. Yeah, from, and you from, said it. Yeah. Uh, and that was the first when they when you started there. That was the first year they opened, right? Yeah. Yeah. What What else can you tell us about Mr. Woods? Uh, well, he. He showed up in Mosul. He was uh, the school's called a bird cage. Remember that bird house? Okay, yeah. And it was it was on on uh, my side of town, Hackett. And uh, Clara Neely and Dotsie Miller and Margaret Caldwell. There was three of the teachers along with Mr. Woods, and there was there was a man I can, I've forgotten his name. And they only had like. Six grades, I believe, yeah. <clears throat> and I used to sneak off from home as a little kid, okay? And I walked by the cemetery. The old, the old cemetery was, was there, but that part they use now wasn't there. That was all woods then, okay? Uh, and they had a pathway by the cemetery through the woods to the school. And it was, it was just a path that, that people walking through it developed. Nobody uh, built a path. It just walked the, 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 uh, the bushes and the grass. He walked down, he'd go down a little, little hill, he'd jump across a creek, and he'd go up a hill, and he, by the time he got up the top of the hill, you were, you were at the school. I should do that every day. I sneak off and go to school. And they let me stay. And by the time I got to the real first grade, I was doing third grade stuff. So, yeah. You always talk about your father and the conversations he had with you. It seems like he, he had a lot of wisdom. He did. He sure did. Uh, you know. I, 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 I didn't tell you this part of the story. When he was taking me to, to catch a train to go to Washington, D.C. to go to Howard, he said... He said, you, you've done all right. <clears throat> and you've done all right. Uh, and uh, you're going to have a, a hard way to go. He said, but we think you'll make it. But he said, I want you to know something. He said, what's that? He said, you don't live here anymore. I was huh? He said, you don't live here anymore. And what do you mean? He said, you can come back and visit any time you want to, you don't live here anymore. It took me a couple of years for that, to, to digest that. And I finally figured out what he meant. That you got to make it, boy. And you're not going to come back home and do like some of the kids who live here are doing. He said, you're coming, I'm going to kick you out. And uh, so I come back and visit. And when I got out of service the first time, okay, came home, was hanging out with, with Oscar Reed, those guys, we, you know, we'd run down to Charlotte and do a few things. And one day, he came home, he said, I want to talk to you. And he said, what's that? He says, what are your plans? He said, plans? He said, yeah. He said, you got to have some plans. I said, I don't have any yet. He said, I suggest you put them together. And I looked at him. I went outside and sat down and I thought about it for a while. And... I got up, went straight down to the post office, talked to this Air Force guy, and we put together an approach that led me to the Air Force and Temple University, okay, in a commission. So that's how I got in the Air Force. How did your father prepare you for all that? Just like I told you. Every day, he made sure I worked. He made sure I saved money. He made sure, you know, that I did the things he expected me to do. And when you came back to Moorsway after you got your master's degree, did you feel that it was all worth it? I felt it was worth it before then. Without that, I would, you know, I could have been, you know, out of the street somewhere.
He was the cause of him. You know, back then, his, his son, and you you received all that back in the, was it 50s? Yeah. And the, when you got your master's, 50s. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's, that's quite unusual uh, for blacks back then <clears throat> to uh, go to Howard and then come out with a master's and stuff. That's, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, I have a question. To um, get over to Dunbar, was there a bus for you to get to Dunbar or did uh -uh. you have to walk in? You're looking at him. <laughs> yeah, your feet, you walk. Do you remember your path? Did you go through Westmore or did you go around? We got we had several different ways to do it. Okay, sometimes we walk, stay on the stay on the streets. If you're walking the street with school with girls, you stay on the on the streets. Okay, and you, just boys going to you cut through the woods, you do all kinds of stuff. Okay, and we used to go across the street from our house and go across Broad Street and go take a path over to uh, Patterson Avenue. Okay, mm -hmm. keep going down. Keep going uh, on that street where Willie Furness lived and, and, and where Joseph built his house. Okay, you just keep going and you cross a pasture and you, you go up a hill and you go by the old reservoir. And by the time you got uh, to, uh, to the top of the hill and walked through a uh, neighborhood with a couple of houses, then you went down the dirt street till you got to McClellan Avenue, then you, you were. Right there at school. Miss Cook's store? Hmm? Yeah. Well, Cook's store was, was uh, sometimes out of the way. That was a long way to go. We, we had short roots in that. Yeah. And you said your mother was a Mills. Are you in relation to Stephanie Mills? No, I don't think so. No. There's a different set of Mills. D. Witt, that's the family you're talking about, right? No, that's a different set of Mills. D. Witt played ball on my daddy's team. Yeah. Well, is there anything that you think of that it's burning to, that the people of the world need to know about you and your experience in Morrisville? Ask that question again. Is there anything that you are just the desire to tell the world that You've experienced something in Mooresville, and the world needs to know about it. That's a good question. Yeah, I, I'm not sure I have an answer for it. But, yeah. I'm not sure I have an answer for it. It was it it was not a, a bad place to, to, to grow up in, and uh, there were people who uh, I can remember that were very supportive of me from the time I was a little kid. A lot of black people. Uh, you, you know the name Aurelia Young? Yeah. Uh, Aurelia was. She was military, right? Yes, yeah, she was military. She was. She was the only black woman I know that that was was a whack. You know, uh, listening. When they met, uh, uh, I gathered that a lot of people that left Mooresville uh, in military and did well a number of years and uh, went on to, you know, achieve great things. They never, some of them did, but a lot of them, they never came back to Mooresville. I wonder, could you kind of tell us, is there what? After the seeing the world, huh? after seeing the world, Coming back to Morrisville. I did not yeah. plan. I did not plan to come back to Morrisville. That was not my plan. If it weren't for my mother and her stubbornness, okay, I wouldn't be here. I'd still be in San Francisco. I guess it's just growing up here and the things that you experienced while you were growing up, and then you get a chance to get away. I guess maybe is it something on the inside that just says, I don't want to go back to those memories, or, or what? No, there's none of that. My memories are good, okay? Uh, and my experiences, I remember with, with you know, some love. Okay? But 
it, it just wasn't my head to come back in a lift. Okay? I, I'd been a lot of places, been around the world, been all over the world, uh, done a lot of things, and I wanted to continue doing that. Okay? Uh, I feel stuck right now. And I've been stuck for, for years because of my mother. If it hadn't been for her and her reluctance to move to California, I, I wouldn't be, you know, I wouldn't be here. Uh, are you familiar with uh, some things that we, we noticed about Moors in, in this area? There's a lot of towns that had names like Mayu Town, uh, Parker Town, Williamstown. Do you remember Williamstown? It used to be a little place out there. They used to call it Williamstown and then Keita Town, then they had a Keita Town, and, uh, and then Neil Town. You know, those, those memories escape me, okay? When you, when you mention them, I mean, I've heard that before, I've heard that before, but they didn't mean much to me, okay? Uh, my memory is, is around streets. Morrow's Chapel had camp meeting. Did you ever attend any of the camp meetings? Yeah, yeah. Well, some, can you think of some of the... As a matter of fact, my daddy's family, family, his daddy was a preacher out at, uh, what's the name of it there? Out the one uh, highway uh, toward the river. 115. Mott's Grove. Yeah, Mott's Grove. Mm -hmm. Okay. His daddy was a preacher there. I remember going every year we went to Mott's Grove and we went to uh, Tucker's and to, uh, there was another one. Uh, Torts. It was Torts Chapel and Morrow's Chapel. Yeah, I went to those soon, but those, but there was another one, a pretty big one. It, it, it was between Mott's Grove and Tucker's. Uh, hmm. Oh, yeah. Because okay. yeah. I remember. We, it was a big thing for folks to get ready to go to camp meetings on Sunday. Folks would, would take taxis to go to, <laughs> pay taxi fares to go to, to a camp meeting. And that was, those were some expensive camp rides back in those days. So you would say that once back when you was coming along was okay, good, or like you said, Perhaps you just said you know where to go and where not to go. You knew your place, and you and you did your damnest to keep it there. Yeah. You know, you, did, you didn't want to get in any trouble, so you just knew your place. And you'd go where you knew you were supposed to go and where you could go. Okay. And you, when you think back on it, uh, we had we had the same the movie house we went to show the best movies in town. Okay. Uh, some. The other, there were two other little theaters where they showed these these crackers, these cowboy movies and stuff. We didn't, we didn't want to see that stuff anyway. So when you were living it, it wasn't that bad. Okay. And what about a uh, uh, question that we normally ask? Uh, how was health care back then? Could you? Say that health care for minorities were pretty uh, good. I, think I, 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 I can't answer something. that question with with, with, with any comfort. Uh, I know in my case, it was pretty good. Old Doctor Sloan uh, was was my doctor. We didn't have pediatricians back in those days, <clears throat> and. Dr. Sloan's office was right above the drugstore where my daddy used to work, okay? So my daddy had a, pretty, had a pretty good relation with old Dr. Sloan. And as a kid, I used to cut Sloan, Dr. Sloan's grass out, out on the main street. That, that beautiful house is still there, okay? Um, and it is a beautiful house. I, you know, found out it was for sale once and I tried to buy it, okay? There's somebody be, outbid me on the darn thing. But the hospital care wasn't that, wasn't that great. Uh, but if you, had, if you had the right doctors, 
Dr. Sloan, and there's another doctor, uh, what was his name? Dr. Skeen. Skeen, yeah. Yeah, it was him. Uh, yeah. You got the same kind of care that anybody else got. Well, in other words, it was like, if you were known, uh, if your parents was kind of well known, because we heard that, you know, back that then, where some of the parents, uh, you know, they worked for, they did domestic work yeah. in the houses, yeah. and in Louisville, from what we began to realize that back then, if uh, there weren't that many blacks in Louisville, that, you know, from that at that time, but uh, if the blacks worked for another white family, domestic family, nine times out of ten, they was kind of taking care of them and kind of making oh, sure yeah. that they yeah. was. I just, my family was the same way. Uh, the family. Uh, who uh, ran the, the mill, okay? Um, Frank Little's wife, uh, Virginia, was a cousin of my mother. They lived down the street. They had worked with that family. That family took care of them, okay? So we never really missed that much, money-wise, okay? But uh, you still need your place. Well, another thing. When the Jack did, it seemed like that. Do you feel, I'm going to ask you this question, they would probably be right but making sure that, that they go to college or get an education? Get to no, I don't think it was more to get about kids going to college back then. They were just more concerned about the kids just growing up and getting out of the house. Okay? Uh, get, get, getting a job. Uh, and they were Kids would come out, come out of school, they, they wind up at the foundry or the, uh, you know, work with Johnson's, coal and crap, or Troutman's lumber yard, or, uh, there are all kinds of places you could get a job, but it was all entry-level jobs. And most folks did that. And, 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 and roofing and uh, all those kinds of things, yeah. Those were jobs that mainly blacks would yeah. jump on. Yeah. Uh, because they were, they were the hard jobs. You, you had to work like a dog in most of places. Well, what would you recommend? What would you say if you had to say something to uh, our kids today, the young kids? Uh, I don't know what I'd say to kids today. <laughs> yeah, they're getting lost. I see that. You know, I think this, this social media thing is one of the worst things that ever happened. It really is. You got, you got so much negative influence coming at you from everywhere. Well, do you think that some of the things that we gained back in the 60s and 50s do you think that we could lose them today because of uh, our generation is just not paying attention to some of the things that we gain and, you know? Well, you, 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 I'm, I'm having trouble hearing you, man. Huh? I'm having trouble hearing you. Oh, okay. I said, do you think today everything, some of the things that we gained back in the 50s and 60s as minorities, do you think that we could stand to lose them today because of people not paying attention, our, our race not paying attention? That's a difficult question. Uh, I don't think a lot of our race is paying attention. Uh, but there are so many other influences that are pulling at them that it scares me. That's why I hate social media. That stuff just coming at them, you know, like crazy, like some big monster. And you know, there's no organized way of defending it, helping them defend themselves against that stuff. And, and what they get begin to believe is, who knows? 
So let me ask you one more question. What's something you'll never forget about Statesville Road or Statesville Avenue? That was, that, that was my street. That was my playground. Uh, all the great people that lived on, on Statesville Avenue. Some of, some of my family. You see that thing? Call from Patrick. <coughs> What's something that you'll never forget about Statesville Avenue? The people who lived there, lived on Statesville Avenue, uh, down to the church and around. Cascade Road, up to where the Coldfield family lived, Dotsie Miller and her, uh, and there were some other black folks who lived over there too. We, we were just all one neighborhood. Uh, the uh, Fuentes family, the Pinkston family, and we all knew each other, had an affinity for each other. And there were a lot of white folks who lived on Statesville Avenue too that were kind of loving, yeah. And you had mentioned that you or your family was one of the first families of black families to move on Statesville Avenue. How did that make you feel? I don't know, that happened before I was born, so yeah. my grandfather built his built his house and uh, my mother's Grandfather built a house on that street, and the, the whole Brown fam family, because they were Browns too. Uh, that whole street was, along with you know the Browns and the Pinkstons, and that was our neighborhood. And uh, you you helped each other day to day, to eat, to sleep. Find a place to sleep, to take care of your house. Uh, and, you know, I, I don't see that kind of... loving to take care of us amongst blacks anymore. I think you don't. Why do you think that is? I, I don't know. I think... I think it's, as each generation is born and raised, they, they're influenced by too, too many other things in the family. I, I got one question, and this is one of my pet peeves, they know I... <laughs> Years ago, and I still, we still do it in our family. Me and my wife still do it, just me and her and me and by ourselves. Back when you were coming along, did the whole entire family have dinner together in the afternoon, supper or dinner, whatever oh, you call in, it? In, in, but nowadays they yeah, they, you had a you had a time to eat your dinner every day, okay, and you knew what time that was. And in my house, Monday through uh, Friday was at three o'clock in the afternoon. And Daddy got home, dinner was ready. And you knew to have your butt there. <laughs> okay. Uh, and on Saturday and Sunday, uh, there was a, a special time too. And everybody knew it. Your whole family knew it. Because sometimes they'd show up when dinner was ready and you, you, didn't, you didn't invite them. <laughs> okay. yeah. uh, you know, the reason why I asked that question because they've heard me say that I raised my grandson, our great one of our grandsons. And when he first came to live with us in the 60s, 